Hello, welcome to Ollie's Garage. Today I will be replacing the steering column bearing and bushing in my 1984 VW Rabbit convertible. This is an extremely common failure point on these Mark 1s where the inner plastic race fails, allowing the bearing to fall out, which induces a lot of slop and noise into your steering because the steering column is just wiggling around. When some of you look at your lower bearing, you actually may see a little metal piece like this holding your lower bearing in. This was just someone who was trying to reduce the slop in the steering column for when the bearing fell out. Up until recently, there was no real fix for this, but a company just came out with a very high quality replacement part that I will be using to repair this today. Stay tuned. The tools and parts required for this repair are listed right here. As always, links and part numbers are in the description below. To replace the steering column bushings, you'll have to remove the knee board as well as the steering wheel, and I've got videos linked to how to do those. I have my dash removed, but that's because I was doing some other repairs. You do not have to remove your dash to do this repair. I'm going to start off by removing this joint right here from the splined end on the steering column. And that's going to take a 13 millimeter wrench and socket. Two Phillips head screws, one right here and one on the other side on the bottom that hold this bottom plastic cover in place. Remove those. And then the cover just can be snapped out of place. It's held on by these two little clips right here. From there, disconnect this wire right here. There's another wiring harness on the other side. Disconnect that as well. You most likely still have your dash installed, which makes removing this wire right here a little difficult. So what we're going to do is loosen these two six millimeter hex head bolts. One right here and one right here. That should give you just enough clearance to push up on this little black plastic piece here because your dash will be right here to remove this connector then. We can remove these three flathead screws so that we can remove our wiper stock. And then it just slides out. If you do have cruise control, there will be an additional wire that runs down here somewhere on a separate connector. You can lift up and slide this plastic piece out of the way. And also remove this wiring harness right here, which goes to your ignition switch. Just wiggle it off. There are two more hex heads that need removed right here and one just on the other side right there. At this point, our steering column is held on in two places. One is this tab right here and one is that U-joint down there. There's this little tab right up here that's kind of hard to see on this little brown rusted clip. I'm gonna be pushing that down to release this vertical tab. Then I can slide the steering column out to the side. The way the system works is you have this tab that's up there and on the bottom it's held in right here by this little lever. So I push this down with my screwdriver kind of one corner at a time, and then pried this black one with another screwdriver over this and end up working. You just have to fiddle with it for a little while. Our steering column is now free, except for bottom the U-joint down there, so you can slide it out and then just carefully pull it out of the U-joint. Grab a screwdriver and you can carefully pry off this plastic piece right here. This is a spacer that needs to go back on, so do not damage it. Flip the steering column over. Use your six millimeter hex key. Remove this screw. And now you can slide off this locking mechanism. Place it aside. And now we can continue disassembling this piece. We can remove this plastic piece as well. Again, note the orientation. Slide it off. Continuing disassembly, we can remove this race. Just pry it off with a screwdriver. 
Grab your steering column and clamp it in a vise. The key is to clamp it on this portion right here. This little metal strip and this right here is so that the steering column can collapse in the case of an accident if you smack your chest in the steering wheel. So we don't want to clamp it on this portion and then change the length of our steering column here. Next, grab a pencil and mark where this race is because we want to put the new race back on the exact same spot. Finally, you can just take a hammer and you can drive it off. I'm using a vice grip to just go around so it's driving on both sides. These are my welding vice grips. I really don't care if I bang them up just a little bit. With everything disassembled, we can now give it a good cleaning. I'm just using a little bit of engine degreaser. Just be careful not to clean off your mark. The scotch Bright pad also works pretty well with some engine degreaser. On this tube, I'm just using a paper towel and some engine degreaser. I don't want to take the paint off. If you want to take the paint off and then repaint it, you're more than welcome to. Mine's still in good shape, so I'm just going to leave it. I almost forgot, I still have to press out this inner bearing race right here. For most of you, this will probably already be disintegrated, but if not, you need to find a long piece of wood or metal that you can stick inside and press it out. I looked around a little bit and I found the handle to my jack to actually be the perfect size, which just fits inside and is able to press this bearing out perfectly. Just a couple of love taps from a hammer. You can see how brittle this was and how it's already starting to crack apart into a thousand little pieces. All right, with everything cleaned, we can now begin the reassembly process. This is the kit that I purchased. Comes with some grease, the race for the top, and then the bushing and race for the bottom here. Use a little bit more of silicone grease. I really like silicone grease. It is very universal and it also doesn't have any properties that really eat up any materials. So you can use it almost any plastic or rubber component even, so that we can slide on this bushing. The same way we removed it, we're gonna tap it on as well again with a hammer and I'm gonna use this vice grip. Be extremely careful that you don't damage any of these grooves right here, otherwise we won't be able to slide it into the U-joint anymore. Just a little bit left to go. Clean off any excess grease and dirt that were collected in the process. Take the packet of grease, cut it open. And lubricate the inside of this bearing. Make sure you use a clean finger and you can spread it around. A nice even coat everywhere inside. You can grab a little bit more of your silicone grease. You can grease the outside with this. And now we will insert this into the bottom of our steering column. So here you can see the bearing on the inside and here you can see this race that covers it. It needs to be inserted bearing open side first, just like this. I tried hammering it, it wasn't going very well and I have a bearing press and I personally am of the school of thought if it's a bearing, you should be pressing it and not hammering it in. So that's how I will be installing this today. And we just press it in until it's flush. Take some grease and grease this bushing. Now take your steering column with it greased and install it. Just like that, into our race. I'm deciding that I'm going to be installing a new piece, which I have right here. Now the difficult thing is you need to remove this ignition lock cylinder and your key so you can insert it into the new one. This locks in with a little tab, so we have to drill a hole approximately right here. I've got the dimensions listed right here, and you need to use an eighth inch or three millimeter drill bit.
with the hole drilled, now grab yourself something to push with, push into this hole, and then just pull out your lock cylinder. Here you have a little bit of a better idea what's going on. When you push on this tab right here, it removes it from right in there where you can see that silver part. That's where it locks in place. With the lock cylinder, it's very simple. As you can see, this has kind of a C turning this way. And if you look in here, there's a C kind of going this way. So we'll just insert the lock cylinder into this new housing. Test it, it works well. Remove the key, the lock pops out, perfect. While you're replacing these bearings, I highly recommend you replace your ignition switch, especially after 30 years of operation, these things tend to fail. It's very simple. Remove the one Phillips screw, and then you just pull it straight out. And now we'll insert our ignition switch, slide it in place, then tighten down the little Phillips head screw right in here. This is a little screw holding in a little piece of plastic that goes into aluminum. Do not over tighten it. Put a little bit of grease on this bushing. You can take this little bushing right here, slide it off. Make sure you apply a little bit of grease to it. I'm going to slide it inside here. There we go. Just like that. And then take some grease. Grease this shaft right here. And then we can slide this ignition lock cylinder on. It's pretty tight fit up here. Some patience and wiggling go a long way. Make sure that you slide the steering wheel lock cylinder on all the way. As you can see in this clip right here, that original rubber piece was slid on as far as it could go. Just a quick note, this new one slid on significantly easier than what you just saw me struggle with with the old one that I had. I tried to press out the bearing on my old one so I could repack it with grease and it ended up deforming the bearing during the process. That's why I bought a new one and this new one slid on almost like butter. So note to self, don't try to press out that copper bearing in there. I've got the steering column assembled and now we have to make sure that everything is properly adjusted. The important adjustment is this distance right here. If this distance isn't correct, then there can be a multitude of issues such as your horn not working properly or your steering wheel not being able to be properly installed. So you really need to make sure that this is correct. The specification is with this spacer sleeve installed all the way on the shaft, this dimension right here, from the spacer sleeve to the top of this steering shaft, need to be 41.5 millimeters. So I'll slide on the spacer. Let's see here, 41.5. That is pretty darn close. I'm gonna continue assembling this. Slide on your wiper stock and screw in these three screws. These screws just go into this aluminum and hold this stock on so you don't need to make them over tight. Just nice and snug. Install this screw right here. I have my steering wheel here and this is the horn ring and this little tab right here makes contact with that horn ring. So you wanna make sure when you slide your steering wheel on that it's making good contact and it's not over smushing it or just not even contacting. And it's a little hard to see on camera, but it's just depressing a little bit and making great contact. So that means our horn will work and everything is assembled correctly. Now time to put it in the vehicle. One quick little side tip, if this bushing's hanging out, you can adjust that by just simply sliding on the silver collar, which is connected to the steering shaft. So I can just slide it in a little bit till it's nice and flush, and then tighten this bolt. The tightening torque is 10 Newton meters or 87 inch pounds. Steering column assembly is more or less the reverse of removal. Don't forget about this little plastic piece. This nub goes into this cutout right here. like that. Then 
right here we have this cutout in this spline shaft and that is going to be exactly where that screw goes through that and you can see the hole for the screw right there. So I'm just going to take my steering column, slide it into this little area where the spring goes and I'm going to attach two screws just to hold it in place loosely. And now we get to wrestle with the spline shaft and the U-joint down here. Once you get it aligned, just wiggle it in place. I did it off camera, it was it's challenging to film it. Grab your bolt and put that through. And you might have to wiggle it just a little bit to get that cut out in the steering shaft to align. Attach the nut. Attach these two hex bolts, one goes right here. And one's just on the opposite side. Torque this steering column bolt to 30 newton meters or 22 foot pounds. Torque all of these hex bolts, including this one right here, to 87 inch pounds or 10 newton meters. Now the absolute thriller of the repair, we get to reinstall this clamp, slide it in top, so that the teeth rest in there, and then we can just use a screwdriver and push it in on the bottom. It takes a little bit of effort, but you'll get it there. It's a little hard to film the installation, but as you can see, it's in. Reattach all of the wires to include the ignition switch wires into your new ignition switch. Reinstall the top cover. Make sure you clean it really nicely now that you had the chance to. This little tab right here has to actually go behind this piece of plastic, otherwise it won't fit properly. So you kind of slide it back that way. And then snap it in place. The bottom cover snaps in place with these two little tabs into the top one. Reinstall these two screws. One goes right here and one goes on the other side right here. These screws just hold in the plastic cover, so do not over tighten them. Now you just need to reinstall your steering wheel. Make sure that you grease this little horn contact area with some silicone grease. The torque for this bolt is going to be 50 Newton meters or 37 foot pounds for the cars without an airbag. And if you do have an airbag, it's 40 Newton meters or 30 foot pounds. Thanks for watching another episode of Ollie's Garage. Please like, subscribe, and comment for more.